Hey folks, this is Johnny and welcome to my first video for February with uh, Containing Studio One. It's containing, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna talk about is we are going to talk about using external instruments like sound modules, keyboards, hooked up through old school MIDI or maybe even a USB connection. In this case, we're using old school MIDI and I'll show you in a second how that's working. Uh, and be able to render the sounds from the module. So you can see I've got a Roland Sound Canvas right there <laughs> in the little picture there. And I've got nine MIDI tracks that are playing nine of the instruments from this module. So let's see, I already have my aux channel set up and I have it pointing to the set of inputs that the sound canvas is plugged into. And there will be another video on that and how to do that. But I want to get the rendering or bouncing of the external uh, of the external instrument uh, done first here so you guys can see that it works. All right, so here is the song. And it's coming in through the inputs on the interface that I'm using. All right, so the interface that I'm using is a Studio Live Series 3, so it's got a ton of inputs. So in order to create this aux channel, you just have to make sure that if you go to your song setup, just have to make sure you have a set of inputs ready for the channels you're coming in on. Now, you can see here that I've titled it Roland Sound Canvas. So now, if we just click cancel and we go here to the input on this aux channel to create the aux channel, you just right click and you say, add an aux channel. So now what we have to do, we have to make sure that we're pointing to the right outs. And for the inputs, we wanna make sure that we're pointing to the sound canvas inputs that we created on the other screen. So now when the module actually puts out sound to the aux channel, controls the incoming volume. All right, so we are all set now to bounce these down. So if I actually close this song and I come back later and I don't have the module pulled up to the right patch that contains all of these instruments, it's, it, everything's gonna be different. So this is a really good thing to do once you're done creating the music track with whatever external instruments you're using and then to bounce them down. All right, so here we go. So let's try it with the first track here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close the mixer and I am going to bring this a little bit wider. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to actually do the drums first. And you could do the control B, but I'm gonna show you all the mouse clicks here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say bounce selection. Now, Studio One is smart enough to know that you are actually using an external sound module because you created, sorry for the crack there, uh, because you created an aux channel. So now, uh, you can see here that this particular uh, information window is pointing to the sound canvas. And I'm using my external module one. The device name I have is external module one. And now I can test it. There we go. So it mutes the other MIDI performances and only plays the drums. Now the thing that you have to remember here is First of all, this is the audition. We actually haven't done anything yet. And you have to also remember that it's going to do this in real time. So since this isn't a VST plugin, it's gonna have to play the part in real time. Uh, so for those of you that are thinking, oh my gosh, if I've got a dozen of these and they're three minutes long, I have to play the whole songs not nine times, <laughs> three minutes long, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's usually better to either do it in small chunks like this or to actually render out the tracks as you're using them if you're using a single module. All right. So again, I have 16 instruments pulled up on this module. So we're going to have to do these either one at a time. We could do them in a group and we can watch how that goes. All right. So we know that this is working and we're going to say bounce track. Now, there it goes. Now it is recording an audio version of this MIDI performance 
on this MIDI channel coming out of my sound module. There we go. And it's going to go all the way to the end of the MIDI event and done. There we go. That is printed. Now, for the rest of the tracks, I'm going to do it this way. I am going to highlight. And I am going to right click. And I'm going to say bound selection. So now it's going to let me test each of the tracks. And that's the bass. So let's go ahead and let it bounce all of the tracks. Yes, this is going to take a few minutes, but I want you to see how this is going. Now, it's not going to show that last one because we're doing them in a group. So now it's doing the bells. So once all of these are rendered, the corresponding audio tracks will show up. Now it's going to do the next one. going to go on to the next one. Now, it's doing it this way <laughs> because we selected all the tracks and we want to mix it down. There it goes. Now, it's going to go to the next one. Not bad sounds for such an old sound module. Well, I got a couple more. I know this is long, but I think it's important for you guys to see how it does multiple tracks in a group like this. And it's a good thing that this uh, little... Uh, the song is only a few seconds long. There we go. Two more. And this gives you a chance to hear all of the parts that I put together for this. One more. And yes, somehow I played that decently. <laughs> hey. Boom. There we go. So now you can see here that it automatically muted the MIDI events. So now if I play it back, we are only going to be hearing the bounced audio sections. Looped it. <laughs> I want to hear the end. Perfect. Okay, so now how do we actually help this view a little bit? One of the things that I could have done is I could have titled all of these and the titles would have transferred to the bounced audio tracks, but I didn't do that. I didn't take the time to do that. But one of the things that I can do here is I can select all of the MIDI. I'm just holding down the command key and selecting all of the MIDI. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say hide. Boom. And since they're all muted, I don't have to worry about them playing accidentally. 
So if I go to the mix, you can see that we only see the channels of the audio tracks. And let's test it one more time. Now, the next time I open this song, I don't have to have the drum module, or I'm sorry, the uh, sound module plugged in, and I don't have to worry about the MIDI information, which is all here. You can see the ones that are hidden are the ones that are grayed out, so I do have all of the MIDI information if I choose to unhide something and rebounce it with a different sound. Really, really simple to do. Or if I want to have a second, like for the drums, if I wanted to actually put a secondary kit on this track, I could do that and then bounce it so that both of the kits play at the same time. But I don't have to, um, I don't have to redo the MIDI performance, which is awesome. All right, so there's going to be more videos coming out when it comes to using external instruments, like external modules and things like that. Uh, in order to be able to set them up, setting them up on multiple uh, MIDI channels and using multiple MIDI outputs to actually render different modules. And I'll be putting those together in this little series here uh, called Bouncing External Modules. So I hope you guys got something out of that, and I will see you in the next video.